the KHOU 11 studios. It's Great Day Houston. And now, here's your host, Deborah Duncan. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Great Day Houston. So, how many of you as parents have had to explain the issue of death to your children? As Christians, many of us tell our kids, it's okay because that person has gone to heaven. But if that's the case, why do we mourn? Why are we so sad when a loved one passes away? The death of a family member set off a lifelong journey for our first guest. At six years old, Deepak Chopra experienced what he calls an existential crisis. When his grandfather died, his uncle said yesterday he was playing with his grandchildren and today he is a fistful of ashes. Deepak's grandmother tried to comfort him by saying, Grandfather is with God in heaven. Since that time, Chopra has studied the questions that so many of us ask. Is there life after death? Is there such thing as reincarnation? Or is that just wishful thinking? Chopra's latest book, The Thirteenth Disciple, sheds light on those questions. Please welcome Deepak Chopra to the show this morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That's so interesting that, you know, as a child, that, that thing kind of sets you on this, this path. And it is so hard for many children because in our youth, we're told, oh, it's okay because the soul does this. But yet we see our parents mourn, and so it, we're conflicted. Yes, it is. So what uh, the bigger question is, what dies, okay? The fact is the physical body you have today is not the one that you had as a teenager or even yesterday. So that body has died. Okay. Once you get that your body is a river of energy and information and that you're stepping into it every moment, um, but it's not the same, then you stop identifying with your body. Okay. But it takes a little bit of growing up to do that, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, once you also recognize your thoughts, emotions, feelings, they're all uh, movements in your own consciousness. You don't have the same thoughts that you had today. You don't have the same psychology that you had as you were a child or a teenager. And that's what life is, is maturing and growing and learning. Yes, but you can't identify with either your body and mind because they're impermanent patterns of experience that your soul is having. Yeah. Your soul, the I, when you say I, when I say I, if I, by I mean Deepak Chopra, then there's no permanent identity to that. But when I say I, which is beyond my ego I, then you see that's not in time. You know, the reason I wrote this book, by the way, is uh, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the way and the life and the truth. And then in Matthew, he says, you are the light of the world. So. You know, all my life I've thought, what did he mean by I? Mm -hmm. Because it can't be the ego identity. It's the, in, in Aramaic, which is the language of the time, I is ena ena, the I within the I, the spiritual I. Yeah. I'm the way. The way is inward. You know, the kingdom of heaven is inside you. Mm. The, I'm the way, I'm the life. Eternal life is not in time. It's the life of the soul. And, um, uh, and, and the truth is the truth of existence. Existence is that which exists is always there. And that which does not exist does not come into existence. So once you understand light of awareness, you are the light of the world. That's not this light, photons. Yeah. It's the light of awareness that gives brightness and color and texture and shape and, and dimensionality and meaning to the world. Yeah. All right, the book, The Thirteenth Disciple, we oftentimes hear the Twelve Disciples, but who's number thirteen? Thirteenth is the feminine face of God, so which we have ignored in all these uh, centuries. Uh, it's that face of God that has to do with beauty, intuition, nurturing, affection, tenderness, love, compassion, joy, equanimity, uh, Nurturing. You well, know, it's, it's, it's almost it's, all the things that m most all religions base. Yeah, but that's what the, the philosophy th on. That's what the Sermon on the Mount is about. But yet, you know, we've taken these great truths, we've institutionalized them, and now we go to war. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mentioned earlier how, you know, how many of us have uh, explained to our children, you know, what death really is. My father recently passed away and I was so touched by when I called my husband and my son and said, well, my dad just passed away. My son immediately sent me this text right here. And um, on this text, he sent a picture of my dad and he said, you know, you know, don't cry, mom. He's not gone. You know, he, he's never going to go away. He's, he's not gone. So uh, it was interesting, that thing that we teach our children, but yet do we really believe what we say? We can only believe what we say if we have faith in the unseen consciousness that makes all seeing possible, in the unseen awareness without which there would be no thought, no perception, no experience of the world. What is it right now that is making your experience possible? And that's your spirit. Yeah. Okay, it's not your perceptual apparatus, which would be useless without your spirit or your consciousness. So again, it's a learning process. You know, we've just been over Easter, which is about resurrection. Mm -hmm. And in every moment, if we learn to die, as St. Paul says, die unto death. You die into the past, it doesn't exist anymore. Okay, the future doesn't exist in, anymore. Your real identity, I am that I am, is always in the eternal now. And in that eternal now, your father as spirit is always there. The image you showed was one particular snapshot of a lifetime. Yeah. Okay. We are not uh, yeah, we are not our snapshots, right? Every act of perception is a snapshot. When I look at you right now, if I open my eyes, I take a snapshot. Mm -hmm. But by the time I close them and open them again, you're not the same person anymore. Mm, interesting. Okay, we oftentimes hear people say, uh, you know, like uh, in conversation, I'll hear people say, oh, do you, uh, do you go to church? It's like, no, and they think, oh, but I'm a spiritual person. So we also hear that kind of conflict between spirituality versus religion. We do, yet churches have performed great services for community. Mm -hmm. They have done great, wondrous things for people. They have done charity. They brought education to the poor. And yet, uh, I, you know, spirituality is a little different in that most re institutionalized religion is about dogma, ideology, rules, and regulations. It's believing in somebody else's experience. And spirituality is having your own experience. So when I look at the teachings of Jesus, my reaction is, how can I have that experience? Instead, yeah. of, you know, if I'm pointing to the moon, you should be looking at the moon and not worshiping the finger. Hmm. All right. By the way, if you have a question for Mr. Chopra, he'll be with us for the entire hour. Uh, the phone number to call is 713-284-1055. 713-284-1055. You can also reach out on our Facebook page, Great Day Houston, which uh, Shannon has done. And Shannon says, we can heal our communities through quantum healing energy, right? Will we reach a time of peace and joy for our planet? Okay, so I know there's some people who are like, yeah, and there are others who are going, what do you mean through quantum healing energy? What does that mean? Okay, the, the, that's a metaphor. But here's the basic point to grasp. Your biology is different in different states of consciousness. So when you're angry, when you feel hostility, a lot of fear, your body creates adrenaline and cortisol. That messes up your innate healing mechanisms. On the other hand, if you're feeling peace, love, compassion, joy, equanimity, or just stillness, your body goes back to its baseline state of what we call self-regulation and homeostasis. So that's what quantum healing means. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Good morning, Melissa. Melissa, are you with us this morning? All right, so uh, let's, I understand we have one of our audience members who has a question for you, Mr. Chopra. And hello there. Hi, put your microphone up so we can hear you. And what's your name? Uh, Alex. And how old are you? Uh, nine. All right, what's your question? Um. Mr. Chopra, uh, like what, what did, you, how did you start meditating and all that? <laughs> how did how you, you start, start meditating all that? Well, and the for, importance for of a nine-year-old, I would say, if you can sit quietly and not say anything for nine minutes. For a nine-year-old? For a nine-year-old, <laughs> uh, then you're meditating. I mean, most people can't sit quietly for even five minutes. So what I say is at the age of five years, just tell your children, Sit quietly for five minutes. You don't even have to close your eyes. Now, when you get to 10, then you can do it for 10 minutes, but now close your eyes and don't say anything. And soon, 
you'll recognize that there's a still part inside of you, which is your soul. But you don't have to even figure that out. Just keep quiet for nine minutes. All right. We have Melissa back. Good morning, Melissa. Good morning. Ah, what's your question? Um, well, I had a question about, you know, uh, being spiritual and being prayerful and, you know, just working with the universe and you know things are working in your life, you know, and it's just amazing how you see things kind of manifest and when you're in a positive light and you're feeling good and you know that it's working, but when that darkness and ne negativity come back and it just draws all your energy, just, you know, how do you keep staying in a, a positive uh, state? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the interesting thing is, that, is that are we meant to be happy and floating on cloud nine all the time? Is that negativity also teaching us lessons? Well, to be trying to be positive all the time can be a very stressful experience. In fact, uh, those people who are artificially positive all the time, they're irritating and exasperating, <laughs> right? Okay. You, what you want to learn is how to be quiet. A quiet mind is much more powerful than a positive mind. And if she cultivates that quiet mind on an ongoing basis, then when the stresses come, she can go back to her center of being and find the peace there. And only in the peace is there creative solutions. Not in a positive mind. It's a positive mind can be very noisy. Yeah. All right. Well, call us at 713-284-1055 or post your question on Facebook. Our contact information is also on your screen. When we come back, find out why Deepak Chopra is in town and how you can win some tickets to see him. Tell us who you are again. I'm the voice of reason for all women out there who have had to stay within a budget. We switched to Fred Loya Insurance and saved over $1,000. We switched to Fred Loya and saved over $830. Thanks, Thanks Fred, Fred Loya, Loya Insurance. Insurance. Hey, men know about budgets. Really? We do. <laughs> now look, let me call my wife and find out what mine is. That's a good one. <laughs> Pick up the phone right now and call Fred Loya Insurance. Proud sponsor of Canelo versus Kirkland, live May 9th on HBO. Quick weight loss, unlike others. Find fat-burning secrets to jumpstart your natural fat-burning ability. Rhonda and Cypress, 80 pounds gone. Their private one-on-one -on -one counseling is so caring, patient, and knowledgeable. And with all the great food choices, I'm never hungry. Jim in Houston, 60 pounds gone. Everything from surgery to group meetings failed me. Quick weight loss saved my life and got me off three medications. Get a 30-day program, just $30. Only at Quick Weight Loss. Call 1-800-235-5673. Four days only at Mattress One. Mattresses from Sealy, Serta, and Beautyrest will be at their lowest prices of the year, with savings up to 70% off. Sealy Posturepedic sets just $3.99. Serta Perfect Sleeper Memory Foam sets only $4.99. Save up to $500 instantly on any size Stearns and Foster GS collection, exclusively at Mattress One. Plus, pay zero interest for five years and get free express delivery. Now through Sunday, visit MattressOne.com to find a store near you. Warning, warning, from attorney Steve Lee. Have you been in a car or truck accident? Does it seem like everyone is after you? Trying to hand you a phone number, a business card, get you to sign something? Don't sign anything. These actions are illegal. Don't let them fool you. Call the lawyer you can trust. Call Steve Lee. He's been fighting for victims in our community for 40 years. I'm attorney Steve Lee. Call me. We can help you. Welcome back. Don't forget, we're taking your questions for Deepak Chopra by phone or Facebook. He will be at Unity of Houston this evening, starting at 730. It is a non-denominational church, and everyone is welcome. Joining Deepak Chopra is the pastor of Unity, Reverend Howard Caesar. Please welcome him this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to start off with you with an email that we got from Elijah out of Katy. And Elijah says, my wife and I are currently looking for a church. We have faith, but we don't believe in just one religion. But we do believe in a higher power help. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, unity, that's that, um, yeah. <laughs> um, right? But there's a lot of power in the name unity. Yes, yes. Unity means oneness. And basically what we are about is teaching universal teachings. Therefore, the teachings that we share are not only those of Jesus, but those of Buddha and Krishna and others that are universal. They're basic. They're about love. They're about people coming together. They're about moving beyond conflict. They're about forgiving. 
uh, all of the basic teachings and ideas, but we open our arms to one and all, wherever people may be on their spiritual path, and there's that blending and total acceptance. Yeah, and, what, and the thing is, I know that you're oftentimes known for bringing people who may be, you know, associated with one group of <laughs> religious folks, and then yeah. a whole other thing across. You're putting the power in our hands to decide, not to argue, right. but to decide. That's right. We may not endorse everything that a person says, but we are in alignment with most of what they're about. This guy, probably everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, you but, know, but, we, but we're trying to really help people move out of the box a little bit and uh, you know, realize other dimensions that exist as opposed to just being in a static place in consciousness. To really move out a little bit and yeah. explore that there are so many mysteries and so many dimensions to this life, people need to be more open, and people like Deepak help break that open. Yeah, yeah, and you know it's interesting, Deepak, because I've you know followed you over the years, and uh, we can't pigeonhole you in one religion either. Mm -hmm. You can't, but you know when you look at the religious experience, whatever religion, mm -hmm. there are three things that are common to all religions. Right. One is an escape from this dimension to another dimension, what we call transcendence or peak experiences of going beyond. The second is the emergence of what is called platonic truth, goodness, beauty, mm -hmm. harmony, love, compassion. The third is the loss of the fear of death, because what you glimpsed and what you experience is not in time. Mm -hmm. Transcendence is not in time. That's common to every religion. Yeah, yeah. Every religious experience. So what experience. are we fighting about? <laughs> right. Well, there are those who are spiritually mature and those who are not as yet. Uh, in the Tower of Truth, there's a difference between the first floor and the 90th floor. Yeah. People see life differently and therefore they're in conflict and disconnect at the lower levels. And they're in a state of oneness and know the truth at higher levels. Yeah, and of course the conflict comes from who we're following. And we, we almost treat it like, you know, two different football teams at the Super Bowls. Like, yeah. no, my team has to win. And it's, it's, it's yeah. like if we don't yeah. get into that divisive point, just recognize and respect that this is, you know, Jesus Christ for me, someone else, it may be yes. uh, uh, just a higher Absolutely. power. Absolutely, that's the conditioning of the world. The conditioning of the world out there is divisive. It divides us. Yeah. You know, there's conditioning in school, and in family, in nationality, in race racism, in religion, there is dividing. It's my religion, your religion, I'm here, you're over there, this I'm me, this. you're there. And our mind works on that and is conditioned and has to be moving out of that. And that's what's actually called kind of creating a separate self that has been laid over the top of who you really are. Yeah. The, the God seed that you are, which is a universal Being whole has self. no gender, being has no race, being has no color. So you said, Jesus, was he a white guy or a black guy? Okay, <laughs> then matter. you start there, then you start questioning, who was he? Yeah. Is the, you going deeper, right? And you go back in that thing and of people needing to claim something. Was, was, he, you know, was he North African, Hebrew, Jewish? What was he? It's not the name. It's what's behind the name. Ena, you know, Ena. You know. What was done. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have Marianne on the phone this morning. Good morning, Marianne. Good morning. What is your question or comment? Uh, my question is... Um, had I get my parents been uh, deceased a while, and I want to know had I get past their death. Good okay. morning. So yes, her, her parents have passed away, and you know I, I can certainly relate to that. And she's asking, how does she get past that? That sadness that we. we she talk has about. to embrace her grief. The only way out of grief is to embrace the grief. The only way out is to feel the pain. The Rumi has a beautiful poem. He said, "The cure for pain is in the pain." Yeah. And, and, and I guess, you know, for me, I saw my dad for 97 years, you know, was in great health and the whole bit. It was really the last two weeks of his life that things kind of went, just spiraled out of control. And when I saw that suffering that he was in, I knew that I had to let go of him and allow him to go because he fought with everything he had because yeah, uh, he, he wanted to make sure my mom was taken care of and the whole bit. But that, I th have to say, seeing that up close is what gave me the peace because if he was back with us in that condition, that was yeah, not yeah. a life. And, and basically, relationships never end. They just change form. Mm -hmm. And so, though a person may be with us for a time, a lifetime, however many years in the physical, once they leave that, move into the unseen, it's not like the relationship has ended. How many people have said, I felt the presence of my mother yeah. or my father? Some have even manifested at the foot of their bed within the first few days of their passing. It's very common. So relationships never end. 
they're eternal, just yeah. as we are eternal. And in the more tangible sense, what he instilled in me continues, and, yeah. and the, I pass those good things on to my son. Right. And so in that way, it, it's That's everlasting. Right. That's wonderful. All right. Uh, Deepak is speaking tonight at Unity of Houston. Tell us a little bit about what this program tonight will be about. I'm going to talk about, you know, the different attitudes people have in contemporary society to God. The characters in this book represent them. So there are atheists, there are agnostics, there are fundamentalists, there are seekers, there are mystics, and then there are those that have reached enlightenment. And so these are the different stages of our own seeking. I'm going to talk about that and to talk about what the future evolution of our understanding of God is. Then I'm going to address how that relates to our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. Yeah. Okay. That starts at 7:30. Tickets for uh, general admission are $35 and 85 for VIP. Every ticket includes a copy of Mr. Chopra's new book, The Thirteenth Disciple. And guess what? Everyone in our studio audience is going home with a copy of the book. Yeah. We'll be right back with more of your questions and comments. The number to call is 713-284-1055. 713-284-1055. You can also reach out to us on Facebook. And also when we come back, I want to ask you about if you believe in reincarnation. If you struggled in one life, are you meant to come back and get it together in the next life? All right, we'll be right back. Next, all new Ellen. Fashion tips from internet star Bethany Moda and the always fashionable Ricky Gervais. I can't stop looking at that. I want to stop, but I can't. Today at 3 on KHOU 11. So excited we get to go to the Academy of Country Music Awards. We just need a perfect outfit. It's the 50th anniversary of the Academy of Country Music Awards. We're hanging out with country music's biggest stars. I think I have what you need to finish off your look. Coverage begins April 17th on KHOU 11 News. Oh, God. CBS Tonight. Dad? It's Meet the Parent with a face-to-face -face disaster. You must be Zoe. Should I call 911? And a heart-to-heart. That's -heart. my dad. You gotta talk. I messed up. Junior made it clear. He doesn't want me around. New NCIS, then. Everybody take it easy. On the ground. We'll get them out. All of them. We gotta believe that. New NCIS New Orleans after NCIS tonight. With AT&T, the choice is yours. Only pay for the services you need to make your bundle work for you. So call now to choose any bundle, like internet for $14.95 and home phone for $20 per month. Or start with UVerse High Speed Internet and add the other services you want to get the bundle you need. With UVerse High Speed Internet, you'll get fast speed at an affordable price. Get wireless service and home high speed internet with a Wi Fi gateway to connect all your Wi Fi devices and save on your mobile data usage at home. Add UVerse TV and with most plans, get a total home HD DVR included for life. Cable doesn't do that. Call now to choose any bundle, like internet for $14.95 and home phone for $20 per month. And ask about our next day installation. Don't wait. Call this number today. Go ahead. The choice is yours. Only pay for the services you need in your bundle. Because with AT&T, it's whatever works for you. back with best-selling author Dr. Deepak Chopra and the pastor of Unity of Houston, Howard Caesar, and we're answering your questions. Uh, before we get to the phone lines, just wanted to, to go back to what I asked before the break, and that is the idea of reincarnation. If you get another chance, if life wasn't perfect the first time, and if you had a great life, do you have to go back and start all over again? <laughs> well, in the universe, everything both recycles and evolves. So your stomach cells are dying every five days. And you have new ones right now because um, the old ones uh, weren't good enough to digest food after a while. Your skin cells die every month. You make a new liver every three months. Wow. So the cells are already dying and reincarnating. What's reincarnating is energy and knowledge and, and uh, information and memory. So in that sense, yes, once you understand your identity as a soul is a repository of experience, what we call karma and memory and desires and imagination, that recycles and evolves till you get a bigger identity and you go beyond your skin-encapsulated 
ego identity, which was a hallucination to begin with. Mm. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Good morning, Sonny. Is that okay? That's okay. Good, good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah, for taking my question. You're welcome. Um, Mr. Shulper, could you comment on the current world violence, specifically ISIS, uh, from a spiritual viewpoint, give us some hope? You know what? And, and, and with that, we have a, um, an email question from Alma Torres in Pasadena who says, I know the Bible talks about Armageddon. It seems like we are spiraling toward that time. Just wanted your opinion on all the crazy things going on in the world today. Well, there are always two forces at play in the universe, the force of creativity, evolution, truth, goodness, harmony. And then there, there's a cosmic force, which is destruction, entropy, and going back to be very primitive uh, forms of behavior. Uh, these are cosmic forces. It's up to us where we want to align ourselves. The more more of, of us align ourselves in the direction of truth, goodness, harmony, the less those destructive forces will be. But the play of the universe is opposites. They always have opposites. The more the goodness emerges, the more the destructive elements become uh, obvious to us. But yeah. they've always been there. Yeah, they've always been there. And I think that's the thing we forget. I remember talking to Condoleezza Rice because Condi and I talk all the time. Um, anyway, <laughs> but she was saying, you know, people were saying, oh my gosh, is it that we are are aware of more today because yes, we have yeah. the you know the mass media but also the point that she made that was very interesting she says do you really think we're in the worst of times and people are like yes 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 and she said this nation don't forget had a civil war mm -hmm. it seems very foreign to us today but imagine if this country was at war with itself so we've been through things before yes. Mr. Caesar. well and, and communication today makes us more aware of what's going on around the planet more than any other time but also you know it's all about collective consciousness and so there are those beings on the planet that are pouring forth uh, the energies of light and healing and non-conflict and then there are as I say the lower consciousness that earlier, are still healing through the consciousness of conflict and division and separation so one is offsetting the other and that's why it's so important for people to be evolving and growing spiritually because their energy goes into the soup of collective consciousness and helps lift the whole. Yeah, and this goes also, back to Also, by the way, teaching. when there's transition, there's turbulence. Like boiling water turns to steam, but it's yeah. boiling. Spring at the same meets time. winter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had that turbulence. All right. Um, Kishana is with us in the studio audience this morning. Kishana, you had a question. Good morning. Hello, Mr. Deepak. I just wanted to know how would you recommend overcoming? hardships in life. Yeah, This is so tough for so many people because mm -hmm. we're told if you pray, if you have faith, if you believe, I think the misconception is that everything's going to be perfect and everything's going to be taken well, care of. One of the things we should always recognize is that we can never see the whole picture. Okay. It's impossible to see the whole picture. We only see what is present right now. So the attitude if, should be that in every hardship there's either an opportunity in disguise or it's going to make you move to a higher level so you'll see the opportunity the creative solution that's the attitude one should have we can never explain since the beginning of time we can never explain why some people have to go through extraordinary hardship or suffer and they're good people but that's because we can't see the whole picture yeah. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, I want to talk about, because oftentimes I've heard you, Pastor Caesar, talk about the power of positive thinking and taking, whether it's with our health, and I know with you also, Mr. Chopra, Dr. Chopra, about our health, whether it's uh, any kind of hardship we're going through, that, that positive thinking can make things so much easier and truly impact things in a physical way. So we'll talk about that when we come back. Also, we're still taking your comments on Facebook and your phone calls. We'll be right back. Want to know what it's like to do the weather? Then head to the Houston Museum of Natural Science and do the weather with Cheetah. Step in front of the camera, give us your forecast, then test your knowledge of Houston weather. I had cracked teeth, crowns. My teeth were really, really bad. I started hearing about dental implant surgery. When I researched and saw what Clear Choice could do, I thought, maybe this is for me. At Clear Choice, we bring hope to millions who suffer from missing or failing teeth with dental implants that look, feel, and function like strong, natural teeth. 
all the specialists with all the technology they need are in one spot. It makes delivering this 21st century world-class dentistry very easy to do, and we do it in one day. They can do something permanent that's always there. You never take it out, and it gives you that solid foundation. Call today for your free consultation. We'll walk you through the entire procedure, including costs. When those folks gave me the mirror and I looked at myself, uh, these, these tears just makes you feel good. Clear Choice did that for me. At Clear Choice, you're about to discover what you've been missing all these years. Call Clear Choice today. NEA.BPD wants you to learn about borderline personality disorder. The classes and support groups provide education, skills, training, support, and hope for people. Terry Bryant announces the no-fee guarantee. You don't pay us anything unless you get your money. 713-973-8888. Quick weight loss, unlike others. Eat more, lose more, eat in, eat out. Delicious, fresh-made, home-cooked supermarket food. Or eat right out of the fridge. Eat out all the time off any restaurant menu and still lose up to 100 pounds or more. Program results guaranteed over 35 years now. Crush cravings eating great-tasting food. Good carbs, too. Plus sweet and salty snacks. Chocolate, too. And no prepackaged meals. Get a 30-day program, just $30. Only at Quick Weight Loss. Call 1-800-235-5673. This programming brought to you in part by John Moore Services. We are back with Deepak Chopra and Reverend Howard Caesar. All right, the, the power of positive thinking. We've, we've heard this for so many years, and there have been so many studies on does it really have an effect on the impact in our health or uh, in, in any other situation? Well, every thought carries an energy, every thought, and because thought is creative, it's very important. Norman Vincent Peale wrote the book, The Power of Positive mm -hmm. Thinking. He was a guest at our church a number of times. Um, and that's where you start. Uh, but you have to continue to evolve to get to the place where you identify with who you really are as a spiritual being. Because we are really, in the end, not our thoughts. We're really, in the end, not our body. We're really not our mind. We are a witness to all of those things. So the witness is what's permanent, and all of those other things come and go. But there is a good rule of thumb that can be helpful as you manage your mind and manage your thoughts. And that is uh, to just get honest with yourself and say, what is it that I have thought or been thinking that God would not have thought? And what would God have me think that I have not been thinking? Yeah. And those are really good questions to ask yourself, get honest about, and get into alignment with. And it will really help carry you forward. I had a brain aneurysm that burst uh, several years ago. And I, I remember looking at a couple of children in the hospital and thinking, it, there's a difference of how they look at it. If you told an adult mm -hmm. you have an hour to live then they would spend 59 minutes after the shock of the first minute, 59 minutes thinking about how they're going to die. If you tell a child you have an hour to live, they would go, yay, we have an hour to play, <laughs> right? To live, the yeah. focus on living what also, you have children left. children don't know the meanings of the word aneurysm or cancer. Yeah. Yeah. And that's very, very helpful. All right. Um, Lanny is with us in the audience this morning. Good morning, Lanny. Good morning, Deborah Duncan. Good morning, everyone. I've had this inquiring mind for a long time about you, Mr. Chopra, and I've watched you for years. I've read your books, too. What rattles your nerves? At what point do you find yourself flying off the handle? I live in a house full of women, and it's very exciting. <laughs> very exciting. And I, my computer screen can freeze up on me and lock me out, and I, I'll lose it right then and there. So where, where do you... You know, shake, rattle, and roll. Okay, I'll be very honest with you. I used to react to criticism, um, but I don't anymore. So nothing rattles me right now. Not even traffic jams? No. <laughs> you just dismiss it immediately? Nothing in my life goes wrong. Yeah, you know, and it's, I had to find, because I find myself Except getting, like, you right, traffic oh, jams. I think I've spoken to you on the phone during a traffic jam before. Yeah. But I have to ask myself, okay, also what is the worst? My, in fact, my son said this. He goes, Mom. It's okay. What's the worst that's going to happen to you? Right. You're not going to die while sitting in traffic. Then just keep going. Mm -hmm. You have no control over it. Yes. You, know? you know, I start my day embracing the wisdom of uncertainty. I say, God, make today even more uncertain than yesterday. Once you embrace that, nothing can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Accepting what is. Yeah, Accepting yeah. Is. All right. It sure takes the pressure off if you go, hey, not my fault, right? <laughs> okay. Thanks. Mark is on the phone this morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Deborah, I'd like to first say I love you. I watch you all the time. Aw, thank you. I love you back. Well, it's my first time to ever call a TV show. Um, if I'm saying his name right, Mr. Chopra, I have a question that's very hard. I live in my grandparents' house and um, where my grandfather committed suicide in 2000. 
uh, I still live here. My older brother, he was also my best friend, my older brother. He came to live with me. And in 2012, he took his life, the same place in the yard where my grandfather did, and I found him. And it was very hard, as you can tell. He wasn't just my older brother. He was my best friend. And I just wondered your thoughts on suicide. I know some people, not my friends, but some people would say that they don't go to heaven. But I've lost all of my family except for my father and a few people. I have very little left. And I, I just want to know your thoughts about my brother. Yes, first of all, I would not entertain that thought that suicides don't go to heaven. I think that's a total misperception. Suicide is usually a consequence of psychotic depression, mm -hmm. and a person who is suicidal needs medical therapy. It's as simple as that. And so anytime anybody has a suicidal thought, people around that person should come to the rescue and make sure they get good medical treatment. Yeah, oftentimes we see that with any form of mental right. illness, you know, mm -hmm. bipolar, depression, right. all those types of things. And it's, yes. it is so hard because those who survive, the you know, survivors oftentimes feel right. guilty. Yes. And you have to be able to lift that up as well. And, and I, I can tell you, I have a friend who, same thing, went out to her yard, mm -hmm. um, great producer I worked with, with years ago. And we know when she showed up to work every day that she was in constant battle every day. Sure. And the only peace that comes is we know that she's no longer fighting. Correct. We don't advocate it. You want to save their lives. I want them to know what a happy life is. But we just know that she's not suffering anymore. And I would just say to you, Mark, um, you say you have very little family left. Well, consider us here at Great Day as part of your family as we come into your home every morning. So we, we'll give you a hug. All right. Um, what the show is for a lot of people. I'm going to start crying because, you know, we can say it's just entertainment, but I oftentimes am stopped by people who say you come into our home every morning. And when they say me, it's really collectively our, this entire staff that puts the show on to, for, for Houston uh, every weekday morning. All right. Um, Sean is on Facebook and says, Mr. Chopra, I have studied your teachings for years and I'm trying to accomplish the principle of relinquishing my attachment to the outcome, but still having a positive expectancy. How do I give up the control of a situation without the fear that it will not go well. I, it's interesting, how do I give up the control of a situation? Well, we never really do have control of many situations, do we? We actually have no control yeah. over anything. <laughs> I would suggest a meditation. He should close his eyes and then he should uh, see what thoughts come and try to hold on to them and he'll find that you can't. Yeah. Uh, evoke an emotion, hold on to it, you can't. Evoke an image, you can't hold on to it, you can't. There is, it's impossible to hold on to any experience. The only thing you can hold on to is the witnessing awareness. The more you practice that, the more spontaneously you realize that the best way to get anything in the physical universe is to let it go. Yeah, you know, I, I learned that question, or I learned that, that lesson actually when I had my child. And so children will teach you a lot of things. Like I said to my son one day, you are not going to have your birthday if you don't stop behaving. He goes, now mom, you meant to say birthday party, didn't yeah. you? It's because no matter what I do, you're not going to stop my birthday. Holding on. Out of your control. <laughs> you know? yeah, absolutely. Holding on to anything is like holding on to your breath. You start to suffocate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I said to him at Mother's Day, I said, thank you for making me a mommy. He goes, ah, I really didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more of your questions. If you'd like to change your child's Medicaid or CHIP dentist to a South Texas dental dentist, call the number on the back of your insurance card or call or visit one of our offices for help. South Texas Dental, Medicaid and CHIP providers for 20 years. We got an online car approval hoodwink in progress. Mm, I hate hoodwinkers. No! What? I guess I could have just knocked on your door. But it said they would approve me, even with my credit. Another internet lie. Only drive time gives you a real online approval. With a guaranteed price. <laughs> Is that safe? I don't know. <laughs> Why are we laughing? <laughs> Save yourself. Get a real online approval first. Go to drivetime.com. Once upon a time, microbiologist Dr. Sharota combined his unique probiotic bacteria with delicious ingredients to create Yakult. Now, millions of families help balance their digestive systems with Yakult every day. 
The Honey Brown Hope Foundation and partner Fairmont Central invite you to take care of the environment and appreciate its diversity with the annual We Love America Healthy, Clean, and Green calendar program. For four days only at Mattress One, mattresses from Sealy, Serta, and Beautyrest will be at their lowest prices of the year with savings up to 70% off. Sealy Posturepedic sets just $3.99. Serta Perfect Sleeper Memory Foam sets only $4.99. Save up to $500 instantly on any size Stearns & Foster GS collection exclusively at Mattress One. Plus pay zero interest for five years and get free express delivery. Now through Sunday, visit MattressOne.com to find a store near you. Have you heard about Marco? Last I heard, he was still battling hepatitis C. Guess what? He got totally cured. Get out of here. <laughs> I thought there was no cure. No, he went to the St. Health Foundation, and he said it took about 12 weeks, and for the first time, they treated him like a real person instead of just another number, you know? Do you or someone you know have hepatitis C? Call the St. Hope Foundation. At St. Hope, you're more than just a number. St. Hope, patient-centered health care with a personal touch. Welcome back. Deepak Chopra has been with us all morning. He advocates, among many things, daily meditation, 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon. This gives a connection to the world, the universe uh, that we live in. Uh, and also we have um, Reverend Howard Caesar with Unity. Okay, uh, online on Facebook, someone says, Kelly Vea says, hello, Deepak. Hi. Okay. okay. <laughs> what's, your t what's your take on medianship? Do you believe we're able to hear from our loved ones that have passed on? I do believe that. I never did believe that in the past, but do I uh, now believe that? Yes, because I've had experiences with a lot of mediums, and uh, they bring back uh, information that is very personal. Yeah. So I every think time we have a, a medium on, though, people say, "Oh, that's evil," <laughs> and then you know, uh, yeah. Howard, you know, they they say it's. If evil, you understand evil. that consciousness it's, is universal, then you can yeah. tap into it. You we're, know? we're afraid of what we don't understand. Right. That's what it boils down to. And so immediately we condemn something we don't fully understand. I take people actually on trips to John of God in Brazil, and Oprah, of course, herself has been there three times. Yeah. And that's uh, a dynamic of healing that's going on through a medium. And it's, it's a profound thing I can't go into a lot other than it's about meditation. It's about God doing all the work. Uh, and it's very, very Catholic. Uh, and it's a, uh, there's thousands of people being heal, healed there that you can't deny. Yeah, and, and there are prophets in the Bible. Yeah. I think people say, yeah. well, if, if you, you know, that, that, that somehow that, that's evil. But, I, you know, I, I don't know the exact verse. I know there are verses that refer to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess if it's being used for good... Then take yeah. it for the good. And we, the, yeah, we don't understand it all. The source of your thought is the source of all thought. So when you go to the deepest level of your being, you are in touch with infinite being. Now along the way, there are symbolic expressions of more expanded states of awareness. So what we call gods, angels, prophets, these are expanded identities of consciousness. In the end, there's only one consciousness. Yeah. All right. Holland. Where are you, Holland? There you are. Question? Yes. Well, thank you for, and as, this is to uh, Deepak. Uh, we was talking, uh, while I was listening to you earlier, and you were saying about, um, and I believe y'all were discussing about the difference in the, uh, I guess, the confusion of religion, mm -hmm. uh, why not one or another, that we're all together. And um, and the reason why I believe that myself, because we must understand there's really only one truth, uh, regardless of what anybody can say in philosophy, and I believe that we owe it to ourselves to find that. And so my question is, how would you interpret, because Jesus tries to distance himself from some of the philosophies that are out there, and the Bible distances itself from some of the philosophies and things that are out there uh, that people are believing, whether it's whatever religion it is. But he made a statement, and I want to get that answer from you. What, are you what, what is your interpretation of that? When he said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me, which was man's goal. Yeah, and you're going back to that to I, so I word that you, exactly. that you used Exactly, what earlier. is meant yeah. by I? Is it his ego identity or his spiritual I? As I said, in Aramaic, the word for I is ena, ena, the I within the I. And what is the kingdom of heaven? It's the fullness of pure consciousness or all possibilities within you. 
and the Father. He said, I am in, I and the Father are one, I am in you, you are in me. So when you combine all those statements, it means we are all activities of the one mind, of the one truth. Way truth in life. Yeah. The yeah. way is the way of contemplative self-inquiry, prayer, meditation. That's the way. Life is eternal life, which is not in time. The life of the spirit. And the truth is the existence of the one mind. Okay, I'm just going to say something here. Um, if God had a voice that we could hear, it, it would sound like yours. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying that we're all thinking, we're expecting it to be like that. <laughs> God's voice is, yeah. God's voice is silence. <laughs> oh, God's voice is silence. Very interesting. Okay, Jessica. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning to everyone. What's your question um, or comment? I have a question. Um, and it's, I guess, for, for the doctor that is there today. Um, how much or what is your take on spiritual cleansings with herbs and stones and so forth? Being of Hispanic descent, we do a lot of herbal cleansings, you know, with, with this herb and that herb. We also do the evil eye, you know, uh, with the egg. I just want his take on how he sees all of that. Yeah, how much is that symbolic for us and man-made and how much of it has just some benefits to it? Actually, the herbal uh, stuff now we are recognizing that many of these healing herbs are what are called adaptogens. They help you adapt to stresses at a cellular level. And then, you know, things like evil eye, etc. they are ways of introducing your intention for healing. And you can use any symbolic uh, expression for that. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that you, you have the science side of yeah. being a medical doctor, and then right. you have the, the side that's kind of a little bit different, and, and kind of they all do come together. Well, the word healing, the word wholeness, the word holy, the word health mm -hmm. are all the same word. Healing is the return of the memory of wholeness, which is beyond your small ego identity. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back. HPD officers accused of falsifying tickets and breaking your trust. The I-Team exposed the scandal and got thousands of tickets dismissed. That's real investigative reporting, and that's why the I-Team won a national IRE award for outstanding investigative work. I love the KHOU 11 exclusive Weatherbug network with cameras all across the Houston area. You can see what's happening in your neighborhood and what it's like all the way across town. The more you know, the safer you'll be. KHOU stands for Houston. Quick weight loss, unlike others. Changing lives, saving lives. Martin and Tomball, 104 pounds, gone. It's easy. They changed my life, physically and mentally. Plus, there's so much great tasting food. I feel great, healthy too, and I'm off my meds. Jennifer and Katie, 25 pounds, gone. They coach and motivate. Thanks to quick weight loss, I learned how to keep the weight off. I'm so proud and confident now. Get a 30-day program, just $30. Only at Quick Weight Loss. Call 1-800-235-5673. I know you're busy walking your business. Oh, see what I did there? Walking your business instead of running your business? Hilarious. Or maybe not. Because with slow DSL from the phone company, you're just walking your business. Call 1-800-719-FAST for deluxe 50 megabits per second internet and Wi-Fi for just $89.95 per month. Deluxe 50 internet is reliably fast. Even during peak usage hours, downloads download faster, uploads upload faster, backups backup faster. Call now. Don't miss this limited time offer. Okay, now you're running, so you need Wi-Fi that can keep up. You'll also get the fastest Wi-Fi for increased productivity away from your desk, so everybody connects fast from everywhere in your workplace. Plus, we install and maintain it. There's no equipment to buy. And now's when you might want to run over to the phone. Get Deluxe 50 Internet, just $89.95 per month. Includes 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-800-719-FAST now. We're back with Dr. Deepak Chopra. His latest book is The 13th Disciple. Also with us is uh, Reverend Howard Caesar with Unity. All right, you wanted to expand on what Holland said earlier. Yeah, that was a juicy question. Thank you for asking <laughs> yeah. that. Um, you know, about the I am, the way, the truth, and the life, uh, you can go back to the conversation that took place in Exodus where Moses and God are talking, and Moses says, who shall I say sent me? What's your name? 
And he said, I am. Tell them I am. My name is I am. So then you come to the New Testament and Jesus is saying, I am the resurrection. I am the bread of life. I am the way and the truth and the life. And so he's really saying, the God in me is the way and the truth and the life. The God in me is the resurrection. The God in me is the bread of life. Now you are the light of the world too. So the God in you is the way and the truth and the life. God in you is the resurrection. The God in you is the bread that will feed your soul. Mm -hmm. So it's the God in you that you need to really embrace, find, discover, and live from, which is about meditation. All right. Uh, you, you, uh, you two, uh, it's interesting. I, I love the commercial break because they're having this little conversation, the commercial <laughs> as well, and sharing information and the whole bit. Um, Reverend Caesar, you've read The Thirteenth Disciple. Mm. So tell me from your point of view... I read that. I couldn't put it down. Uh, it's a great book. I'm amazed about his writing skills and abilities, all the different areas that he's written about. This is his 82nd book, by the way. That oh, wow. deserves applauding. What, but, 22 uh, bestsellers, right? <laughs> 23. But it's, uh, it, it's a, a story, uh, and it, it encapsulates the, the shifts that people go through in their spiritual path, and their shifts into awakening, and there's the skeptic and the cynic, and there's the fighting that goes on internally in inner conflict about it and because of other conditionings but ultimately they have some breakthroughs and some awakenings and they're taking into an experience of a dimension that they had prior not known and it's a beautiful story yeah and that one that we can all apply to our, yeah, our personal yeah. lives all right we have alicia good morning Thank alicia you, good morning uh deborah you. what's your question or comment uh my question is i have a friend that Recently, she has uh, become a very uh, and with a lot of anxieties and uh, getting sick, and I don't know how to help her out in the positive way to get it out of that, to be bubbly, to be herself all over again. Yeah, and so there are two different things you look at. You look at it from the doctor side, of course, uh, when somebody is experiencing a lot of anxiety, and then, of course, there is that kind of spirituality side. Well, there are three things that uh, are very helpful. One is a practice, a daily practice, whether it's prayers, contemplative self-inquiry, meditation. The second is get involved in helping others, service of some kind. So you've been looking at that in, in, in like psychologists and yeah, therapists. The more Instead you of help others, you the better you feel. Yeah, that becomes their medication. Yeah. Instead of a prescription, yeah. they're the, saying go help somebody. And the third is getting together with other people who are uh, seeking you know, healing or uh, spiritual knowledge. Come to his church. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there and of course, are. make sure physically there's not something going on of as course, well. Of course, yeah. But anxiety usually is not because right. of physical things. Depression right. is, yeah. but not anxiety. Good point, yeah. That's why you're a doctor. All right, I just play one on TV. All right, Krista. Good morning, Krista. Hi, good morning. What's your question or comment? Um, my boyfriend says that I am a very negative person. Well, part of me agrees with him, but I don't necessarily think that that is the case because of, I think I'm just being realistic because of my life experiences. Oh. Okay, something happened with the phone line there, but anyway, she's saying, well, yeah, so boyfriend maybe says she she's should, very negative. Maybe uh, switch boyfriends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's, he's constantly <laughs> yeah. criticizing her. But there are all, always <laughs> those people that are around, like, you know, it, the, the glass half full, the glass yeah. half empty. And you have to look at a half empty glass right. just in case. But, I you know, my husband and I go through that. And he's like, but what if this happened? I'm like, okay, well, then let's just sit in the house all day. She should take that <laughs> as feedback without getting personally offended. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you got to understand if somebody just doing that to... Mm, 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 yeah, mm, then mm, let's... Right? To, shed the, to take the light off of them or do they really mean that? All right. Um, Cassie, where are you, Cassie? Hi, what's your question or comment? My question is, do you believe in the Holy Spirit that was left here for us, our helper? Go ahead. Of course, of course. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Father is the all-knowing mind of God. Uh, the Son is the perfect idea of man. Uh, Jesus was the great example, uh, not just the great exception. We are called into that as well. And it's the Holy Spirit, which is the guiding force, the energy, the intelligence that we draw upon that moves into our consciousness that guides and directs us. It's the spirit that we connect with that takes us into wholeness. The Holy Spirit is the one mind at the source of all minds. 
Yeah. It's interesting. I think people are still kind of looking at you going, well, now, are you Baptist? Are you Catholic? Are you Hindu? <laughs> what are you? Right? We're, we're mainly again, Christian, but we open our arms to Being yeah. has no yeah. gender. Yeah, yeah. Being no has title. no race, yeah. no title. All right. We'll be right back. Attention mothers who are prescribed the drug Zofran for morning sickness. If you took Zofran while pregnant and your child was born with a birth defect, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Our lawyers are investigating possible links between Zofran and serious birth defects in newborns. If you took Zofran while pregnant and your child was born with a heart defect, cleft lip, or cleft palate, call board-certified lawyer and former judge Terry Bryant. 800-444-5000. 800-444-5000. Let's go over my expectations. I want great coverage, personalized coverage. If my car insurance company wants to treat me like the most important person in the world, I'm fine with that. Sounds like Amica is your kind of auto insurance company. Call us now for a free quote. Be helpful. Be nice. Explain my options, why they're important, how they can help me save money later on. That's what Amica's all about, taking the time to get your coverage right. We should make the phone number bigger. Yes. I want my home and auto insurance together with one really good company. Do a little research about Amica and you'll be impressed. We're very proud of all the recognition. Respect, courtesy, run out of fingers here, uh, savings. You could save up to 15% by combining auto and home insurance with Amica. My friend has Amica and she says the claim service is the best she's ever seen. My neighbor said he'd never leave Amica. Yes, talk to our customers. They'll tell you nobody takes care of their policyholders like Amica. Or just call for a quote right now. Write the number down. Maybe they can pause it. Grab a pen. For four days only at Mattress One, mattresses from Sealy, Serta, and Beautyrest will be at their lowest prices of the year with savings up to 70% off. Sealy Posturepedic sets just $3.99. Serta Perfect Sleeper Memory Foam sets only $4.99. Save up to $500 instantly on any size Stearns & Foster GS collection exclusively at Mattress One. Plus, pay zero interest for five years and get free express delivery. Now through Sunday, visit MattressOne.com to find a store near you. On tomorrow's great day, the creator of the shabby chic movement, Rachel Ashwell, will be here. Plus, New York Times bestselling author, Barbara Taylor Bradford. Um, I want to round out things today with a comment from Shannon on Facebook. She says, thank you. I love your answers. A peaceful, quiet mind is more powerful than just being positive. You have greatly inspired conscious, compassionate living in our family. And so uh, it's, it's a change for a lot of people. But again, just in being quiet and letting the spirit move you, I guess you could say. When your mind is quiet, inner energy spontaneously wake up to bring about what is intended at a very quiet, subtle level. All right. And again, uh, Dr. Deepak Chopra will be at Unity tonight at 7.30. Uh, Reverend Howard Caesar, otherwise people can worship with you what times? Well, 9 and 11 every Sunday. We have a midweek service as well and Wednesdays at 7 as well. And as so we mentioned, you know, the, classes, the term is Unity. Workshops. Everybody's welcome. Yes, and Unity means oneness. Yeah, so. and not denominational, but you can just uh, get fed by the Spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for allowing me to be on today. Gentlemen, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank and I think you. it's time to sing Get Right Church and Let's Go Home, because y'all know the song. <laughs> Get right, church, and let's go home. All right. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>